Imagine a world where apes were the dominant species. Towering giants roamed the forests, while smaller, agile primates swung through the trees. This isn't a scene from Planet of the Apes. It was a reality, just a few million years ago. Today, apes are a dwindling group, with only about 20 species remaining. But their story is far from over. The rise and fall of these ancient apes shaped human evolution and left a lasting impact on the world as we know it. But what happened to these magnificent creatures? Why did they decline? Discover how they adopted to changing environments and laid the foundation for our own existence. Spanning from about 23 to 5 million years ago, the Miocene Epoch was a time of dramatic environmental and biological shifts. This was especially due to the fact that this period was when the Earth began to cool from the tropical warmth of the Oligocene Epoch. As the Earth cooled, landscapes across continents underwent a dramatic transformation. Grasslands expanded, forests thinned, and climates became more seasonal, resembling the world we know today. Thanks to this big change in the climate, this epoch became special, as there was a massive explosion of life forms, especially primates. Diversifying and spreading across the world, these apes would go on to change the world as we know it. They not only thrived in this world, but also laid the evolutionary foundation and pathways that led to the emergence of modern apes and humans. This was all possible because in the early Miocene, forests dominated much of the planet, offering apes abundant trees for shelter and food. As the climate cooled and dried over millions of years, forests gave way to savannas and grasslands, especially in Africa and Eurasia. This new environmental shift created new challenges for primates, forcing them to adapt to varying ecosystems. Essentially, the diversity of habitats from dense forests to open savannas created unique evolutionary pressures. These changes ensured that apes that could survive in both arboreal and terrestrial environments had a survival advantage, leading to the emergence of species with new locomotion patterns, diets, and social behaviors. Think of the Miocene as a primate playground. Nature experimented with various evolutionary strategies, resulting in a population boom of apes. Over 50 hominoid genera spread across the globe, showcasing the incredible diversity and adaptability of these ancient creatures. While the Miocene saw a burst of primate diversity, the earliest hominoids were surprisingly familiar. Astonishingly, despite their ancient lineage, these species exhibited characteristics reminiscent of today's apes. Although the similarities were not on a one-to-one -one ratio, these early apes had enough similarities to gain the nickname the Dental Apes. A peculiar nickname, they gained this because their teeth had features similar to modern apes, but their bodies were more monkey-like. Among these early apes was the Proconsul, one of the best-known genera from the early Miocene, which dated back to about 23 to 17 million years ago in East Africa. Considered a crucial part of early ape evolution, the proconsul was quite fascinating. Even though it was an extremely early primate, this ape's dentition still showed the characteristic Y5 molar pattern, typical of apes. Its body was more like that of a monkey, although it lacked a tail. The ape also had a flexible back and grasping hands and feet which suggests it lived in the trees but moved quadrupedally like a monkey. Another one of the earliest significant apes of the Miocene was the Moritopithecus bishopi, a primate whose discovery in Uganda gave scientists new insights into early ape evolution. Dating back to around 20 million years ago, the Moritopithecus displayed key traits that marked a shift from earlier primates. Unlike its predecessors, which were more monkey-like, the Moritopithecus had a more upright posture and greater flexibility in its shoulders, a trait associated with modern apes. In fact, its shoulder blade structure even suggests that it could brachiate, which means to swing from tree to tree. This trait was a crucial evolutionary leap toward the greater locomotor versatility of later apes. Essentially, these species represent a transitional form, hinting at later adaptations that would arise in other primates, like knuckle walking and the evolution of specialized dentition. Besides the Moritopithecus, the Afropithecus, which lived around 18 million years ago in Africa, was also another primate that really shook things up. 
Known for having thick enamel on its teeth, the Afropithecus's dentition suggests a diet of harder, more abrasive foods than that of earlier species. Uniquely, the Afropithecus was one of the earliest hominoids to show this adaptation, which could indicate a shift in diet due to the environmental changes at the time. By the Middle Miocene, around 16 to 14 million years ago, apes were finally spreading across Africa, Europe, and even Asia. By far, one of the most significant species during this time was the Gripopithecus, an early ape that lived in Europe and Eurasia. Known from fossil discoveries in sites like Germany and Turkey, the Gripopithecus displayed a mix of primitive and modern features. For one, it had a robust body structure, suggesting that it could move comfortably on the ground and in trees. Its teeth, with thick enamel, pointed to a diet that included hard and fibrous foods, hinting at the diverse environments these apes were adapting to. The Gripopithecus represents a critical phase in ape evolution, as it marked the expansion of primates into new geographic territories. This expansion was significant because it exposed apes to different climates, diets, and survival challenges. As forests continued to shrink and savannas spread, apes like Gripopithecus had to adapt to a mosaic of ecosystems, trees for shelter, and open areas for foraging. A few million years later, the species Kenyapithecus wakeri, dating back to around 15 million years ago, became notable for something completely different. Being one of the first known apes to show adaptations for knuckle walking, this species walked in a manner that is similar to how modern gorillas and chimpanzees move today. In fact, it may have spent more of its time on the ground than in trees, indicating an important transitional phase as apes began to adapt to more terrestrial lifestyles. It wasn't the only fascinating ape during that time, as the Equatorius, which lived around 15 million years ago in Kenya, was also shaking things up. With features that suggest a more modern ape-like use of its limbs for climbing, the Equatorius was not fully adapted to the suspensory locomotion that is seen in today's apes. It is a good example of an ape in the transitional phase between earlier, more monkey-like apes and the later forms that would develop more specialized modes of movement. These species show the gradual transition from small, arboreal primates to the more diverse and specialized apes that emerged later in the Miocene. They also exhibited important adaptations in dentition, locomotion, and diet, setting the stage for the evolution of later hominoids and eventually the ancestors of humans. But how exactly did these apes become the ones we know now today? And who was our last ape ancestor before our divide? As time went on, evolution took its course, and by 11 to 12 million years ago, a new, unique species evolved that really stood out. Discovered in Spain, the Pierolopithecus is thought to be a key ancestor of both modern great apes and humans. For one, it possessed a mix of primitive and advanced traits. See, its facial structure and wrists were similar to modern apes, but its lumbar vertebrae suggest a lack of brachiation, meaning it wasn't a dedicated arm swinger like today's apes. In fact, its significance lies in its intermediate form, showing early adaptations towards great ape evolution while still retaining some monkey-like traits. A few years later, the Oranopithecus, discovered in Greece, emerged around 9.6 to 8 million years ago. It had robust jaws and thick enamel on its teeth that were adapted for chewing tough, fibrous plant material. But what really made this ape special was the fact that it displayed some traits similar to modern African apes. One of the most iconic of the traits was its facial structure, which suggested that it might be a close relative of the ancestors of gorillas and chimpanzees. This iconic primate thrived in a dry savanna-like environment, which marked a shift from the dense forests where many earlier apes lived. This period of time really saw the evolution of apes that look more like the ones we know today. A good example was the Sivapithecus, which was found in India and Pakistan. This ape was a game-changer, as it completely resembled the modern orangutan. Its flat, broad face and large molars with thick enamel indicated a diet that included tough, abrasive foods. It also had powerful jaws that were well-suited for processing a wide variety of food, showing adaptability in challenging environments. This genus survived for about 6 million years and is believed to be a direct ancestor of orangutans. 
Another iconic primate was the Gigantopithecus blackii, which lived between 6 million and 300,000 years ago. While a bit later than the classic Miocene epoch, the Gigantopithecus definitely deserves a mention. After all, this ape was the largest primate to ever exist. Living in Asia, this monster grew up to 10 feet tall and was likely a ground-dwelling herbivore. Due to its size, it is thought to have had a tough, bamboo-heavy diet, similar to what pandas eat today. Perhaps the most important ape ancestor to us today is the Oreopithecus. Found in Italy, this ape was quite a bit of an oddball in the ape evolutionary timeline. Living from 9 to 7 million years ago, its peculiar skeletal structure suggested a form of bipedalism, although it's still debated whether it was truly an upright walker. Weirdly, the Oreopithecus had a smaller brain compared to other hominoids and might have spent much of its time in swampy areas, feeding on aquatic vegetation. Although a lot is still unclear about the Miocene, one thing is for sure. The diversity of apes during the Miocene was a huge show of how evolution was influenced by shifting climates and habitats. These changes pushed these primates into specialized adaptations, or evolutionary dead ends. Some evolved greater arboreal agility. Others developed powerful jaws for tough diets. In the end, some even ventured into more terrestrial lifestyles, setting the stage for the hominins that would eventually follow. But what pushed the rise of homonyms? Quick pause. If you're enjoying this journey through the evolution of the brain, take just a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. More than 97% watch the videos without subscribing. Imagine what we could accomplish if everyone subscribed. It would make all the difference for this channel. Thank you so much. As the Miocene drew to a close around 5 million years ago, the world was on the cusp of another major environmental transition. See, the earth continued to cool, and forests became even scarcer, and in response, some ape species adapted to life on the ground, while others remained in the trees. This particular division in lifestyles led to significant evolutionary divergences. In fact, because of this division, the late Miocene saw the separation of the ancestors of modern humans from other apes. This is because while some apes, like the ancestors of modern gorillas and chimpanzees, remained primarily arboreal or adapted to forested environments, others began to explore more open terrains. These ground-dwelling apes would eventually give rise to the first hominins, the group that includes us, the modern humans. A direct byproduct of the division between arboreal and terrestrial is the evolution of bipedalism, which is the ability to walk on two legs. This was one of the most significant developments during this period. While early apes were largely quadrupedal, using all four limbs for movement, the shift to bipedal locomotion in hominins marked a fundamental change. This adaptation likely arose as apes moved into more open environments, where standing upright offered advantages in seeing over tall grasses, reaching for food, and traveling long distances. But enough about us. What happened to the apes? Besides starting the race to humanity, the Miocene also saw the evolution of several key traits that continue to define modern apes. One of the most distinctive adaptations that formed was knuckle walking, a form of quadrupedal movement used by gorillas and chimpanzees today. Knuckle walking might seem counterintuitive at first, but it actually allows apes to move efficiently on the ground while still retaining the ability to climb trees when needed. This locomotor strategy emerged in response to the increasingly mixed environments of the late Miocene, where apes needed to be versatile in both terrestrial and arboreal settings. During the late Miocene, dental evolution also played a significant role, as many apes of this epoch developed the Y5 molar pattern, a dental structure that allowed them to process a wide variety of foods. At its core, the Y5 molar has five cusps arranged in a Y shape on the lower molars, making it well-suited for grinding both fruits and tougher plant materials. Essentially, this dental adaptation gave Miocene apes the flexibility to thrive in different environments, whether they were foraging in forests or more open areas. Another critical development was the evolution of the shoulder. Now this might seem like an unnecessary detail, but as apes became more adept at swinging through trees and later adapting to mixed environments, their shoulder anatomy evolved to provide greater flexibility. Basically, the rotator cuff muscles became more refined, allowing for a greater range of motion. 
this flexibility is one of the key differences between apes and monkeys, and it was crucial for the brachiation seen in species like Moratopithecus and later apes. In a very literal sense, the Miocene Epoch was a time of unparalleled evolutionary experimentation for apes. The diverse environmental conditions, combined with geographic shifts and changing ecosystems, created fertile ground for the rapid diversification of primates. It was then that transitional species like Moratopithecus paved the way for later adaptations, while the spread of species like Gripopithecus demonstrated the apes' ability to thrive in varied environments. As the Miocene ended and the world continued to cool, the evolutionary paths of apes diverged. Some species specialized in knuckle-walking and arboreal life, while others, like the ancestors of humans, took to the ground and developed bipedalism. However, the effect of the period remains, as the traits that emerged during the Miocene, from Y5 molars to shoulder flexibility, continue to shape the apes of today. The Miocene may have ended millions of years ago, but its impact on the evolution of apes, and ultimately humans, remains profound. The evolutionary successes and challenges of this epoch set the stage for the rise of the hominins and the eventual dominance of Homo sapiens, making it a period of immense significance in the story of life on Earth. But what do you think? Was the Miocene truly the planet of the apes? Which species from this fascinating epoch was your favorite? How do you see today's apes evolving? And what prehistoric animal would you like us to explore next? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this journey through prehistoric times, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more amazing insights into the wonders of the ancient world. Until next time, stay curious.